And welcome back. Now here we have a brand new inner tie rod tool. Well, it's brand new to me. I'm sure this design has been around for a very long time. But I got it off of eBay for a pretty low price. And I thought I'd give it a shot. You know, what have I got to lose? But, uh, so I get it in. And this is exactly the package how it came in. As you can see, it was already beat up right off the bat. The first thing I noticed is that this little Phillips screw right here is already rusty. So, uh, <laughs> uh but besides that... Just looking at it, it looked exactly how it showed in the description. So it looks like a pretty uh, straightforward tool. You have what I'm going to call a cam because it, it rotates as you can see. It's off center and that's what's going to pretty much lock onto the inner tire rod when you rotate it. Now this little Phillips screw seems kind of flimsy to me. At first I thought it would be the weak spot but then I realized that the the screw the tool doesn't apply its force onto that screw at all. It's just to hold it in place. So here's my traditional inner tie rod tool that a lot of people know. And I tried it on this Dodge Durango and I just did not have the correct adapter. And the one, the closest one I had just kept slipping. So that was a fail. Now here I am trying the new tool on the Durango and just making sure it actually fits. So it does seem like it is going to fit this application. Now here I'm trying to start on my propane torch, not realizing that the valve is still closed. And there we go. I guess it would really help to turn it on if I actually open the valve. In my defense, I did have earplugs in so I could not uh, hear the difference whether the gas was escaping or not. So the reason why I'm using the propane torch here, because let's be realistic, if you're trying to do inner tie rods, they're usually under pretty tight and you want to give yourself the best advantage that you can. So normally I would use uh, some sort of heat to get these inner tie rods loose. So that's why I'm doing that here. And you saw I just wiped down the inner tie rod with a rag because I noticed that there was some grease on it. And again, we're trying to get the best advantage we could get. So I cleaned off any grease because I really want that cam on the new tool to really bite into it instead of slipping. So here I am just trying to set everything up. And uh, it kind of falls out of place, but it didn't take too long to get it set right back in. And here's a ratchet I'm going to be using it's a very long one as you can see and traditionally or normally you would want to use something like a breaker bar for this or if you are going to use a shorter ratchet put a cheater pipe on it or something but you are going to need something with a lot of leverage I know it's hard to tell but I am applying force right now and as you can see something happened so my initial thought was that I broke the tool and here I'm just really surprised. That's why I just kind of like waved my hand because I was like, oh my God. So I was actually really surprised that it broke this, uh, this inner tire rod loose because I had been trying for a good 30 minutes before this with other tools without any success, obviously. And look how easily it comes right off. I mean, it's just, so if we look at the inner tire rod here, you can see right here, this is where the cam side bit into it and it gripped right onto it. And if we rotate the, inner tie rod you can see on the other side where this is where the other end of the tool bit into the inner tie rod and really locked into it so you get that really good grip and it did not let go so so far i'm impressed i mean yeah so i'm i'm liking this thing that the ease of it of how fast it was to install how fast it is to get it off once you're once you're done removing the inner tie rod now looking at it, I don't see any visible damage to the cam itself. I don't see any of the like the any of the teeth like smashed down or anything like that. Now the only downside to this tool is that in order to use it, you have to remove the outer tie rod, the jam nut, and the bellow in order to slide this tool over the shaft of the inner tie rod and get it in place. Now I do have another tool that I actually made a review on and you can check this video out right here in the top right hand corner. You don't have to really take any of this stuff off in order to use that tool. The downside is it takes much longer to set up and to get it in place. But I figure we're going to put it through its paces just one more time. I have to do the other inner tie rod on the other side of this vehicle. And this time we're not using any heat or any previous method for trying to remove it. So this is pretty much the first time that this tool is going on here or any tool. And we're going to see how well it works to remove it, especially with no heat. This should be a little bit more difficult. And I could just tell you right now, I'm applying a lot more force and this thing is not budging. So the heat really does help. But uh, yeah, it's putting up a fight. 
Now naturally inner tie rods are difficult to get off, but I have a trick. I'm going to show you the exact stance that you need to get these things off. And there we go. I know the tool worked on the other side, but I was applying so much force here that I was pretty sure something broke. But to my surprise, it did not break. It actually loosened the inner tie rod. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy off and give it one more look and see if we cause any damage to the new tool. Okay, so as you can see, there's no physical damage to the cam. Everything still looks perfect. Sure, it's a little dirty, but that's not an issue at all. Now, one other thing that I failed to show you earlier was inside of this tool, there's actually more teeth cut into it, and that's to bite into the backside of the inner tie rod that you're trying to remove. And I actually showed uh, the marks on the tie rod earlier where it bit into it. So as you can see, those teeth, they look perfectly fine. They're not flattened out either. So uh, here's my normal tool that everyone knows and usually it works great but unfortunately for this vehicle I don't have the correct adapter to fit it nicely. Now I don't have a review on this specific one but I did make a review on a tool that's similar to this one from Harbor Freight so it's a bit more affordable. So I'll put that video right here in the corner and this is the other tool I was talking about that I put a video out as well and you don't have to take everything apart in order to use it. It just takes a little bit longer. But honestly, I think this is going to be my go-to inner tie rod tool. I'm always going to try this one first for now on, just simply because of its uh, speed. It just seems to work a lot faster. With that being said, I hope you like the tool and maybe it could benefit you in some way. So don't forget to go check out my Instagram. It's where I post all my updates. And like always, thanks for watching.